Right, hopefully this is going to work. What we're doing today is queen wasps. Uh, you may have seen, this is the shed, and you may have seen a previous video of wasps eating my shed. I never did find the nest, and it is now late September. So now is the time. But first of all, before we get into that, um, queen wasps. One queen is responsible for that wasp nest, which is causing a load of hassle and drinking all your drinks. And all of those little wasps are responsible of one single queen. And she can lay between 200 and 300 eggs a day once she's managed to establish a little nest, which she does on her own to start with. As soon as she's got some workers, all she does is lay eggs. And all of the workers do all the work. They only live up to about three weeks. It's the lifespan of a worker. A w queen wasp is pretty much a year. At the height of summer, you can have 10,000 wasps in one nest created by that one queen wasp. So the idea here is, let's try and kill a queen. This is a bit like the film Alien or Aliens, you know. Doesn't matter how many of the little ones you squish, you're after the big mother. So that's what we're looking for. How do we catch queen wasps? There are loads of them. Towards the end of the summer, the queen wasp lays all those workers, the workers do all that trouble. She um, exudes, puts out pheromones, which keeps the whole gang together doing what they're doing. And the, queen, and the workers do all sorts of stuff. If you see workers getting little drinks all over your garden, they're getting drinks because they need a drink. But they're also taking water back to the nest because the nest is getting too hot on a hot day. And then they all sit around in the nest fanning and letting the water evaporate and cooling everybody down. So all the new larvae can hatch so they can have 10,000 wasps hassling you at your barbecue. So, gets towards the end of the summer, she stops laying worker um, eggs and she starts laying queen and male eggs. Now we're just going to have a little um, stop for some train spotting. So hold on, I'm not going to bother to pause it, we'll just watch the train together. There we go. They don't particularly bother me, and they certainly don't seem to bother the wildlife around here. Because I've got enough of that, including insects. And we should say that wasps do a lot of good work in your garden. They do a lot of the pollinating for you, just the same as the bees do. They eat aphids, and there's no good place in your garden for aphids. They eat certain caterpillars, which on the whole can be good if you're trying to grow cabbages and stuff. Bit of a shame if it's a really rare butterfly caterpillar, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, they clear up carrion. You'll see wasps eating dead, dead flesh. They'll be all over it. They love it. Um, poop. Dog poop they'll often eat. So they do do a lot of good work for us. We don't necessarily want to get rid of all of them, but getting back to how many queens are laid, this is the really freaky thing, is that she can, hold on, mid, middle of the summer, she's gone, done 10,000, hold on. <laughs> right, train spotting again. Um, I hope you like trains. Like I say, I don't mind them. This one's going the other way. Maybe I should check the timetable before I do this, but who knows. Where were we? Yeah, that's the freaky thing. Right, I just found it on my little little notes. The queen wasp can lay between 1,000 and 1,500 new queen wasps at the end of the summer. So that's 1,000 to 1,500 queen wasps who will fly the nest. Our queen wasp, the one who's done all this work all this year, will die off when she's done that. She's also laid eggs for fertile males. All of the work are, workers are infertiles. In um, beekeeping terms, they're called drones, which should please the feminists. So all the men in, be in a bee thing are called drones. Anyway, between 1,000 and 1,500 new queen wasps will leave the nest. Here is one. Oh, she flew by. 
thousand fifteen hundred, they're all going off to find fertile males who they'll mate with, and then their most important thing is to find somewhere to hibernate. And we're talking September, October, and they're desperate to find somewhere to hibernate. They want somewhere dark, relatively dry, um, hidden, you know, so that they don't fall prey to just birds or, or the robins, and they can live to really quite amazingly low temperatures. And they'll be up in your little roof spaces, and this shed is going to be perfect for them. This shed's going to be full of them. Um, and indeed the house, because I've got holes in my roof, so they fill up in there. Now, our idea here, so she's done that, she's got mated, she's now looking for somewhere to hibernate. All those poor little bloke wasps, they'll just die as well. All of your workers will die. And this is when they're going to be out and about looking for um, anything high sugar in the autumn. So they're out of the nest, because they're not doing their work anymore. Oh, hold on, I've got some horses going by now. Yep, that's the neighbours going out for a ride. Anyway, right, sorry, I'm getting really rambly here now. So let's get to the point. So the whole point of this is we're going to try and stop that queen wasp from getting through the winter so that when she comes out, they're very territorial, they're very nearby, they don't go, going to travel far. As soon as she comes out of hibernation, the one thing she wants to do is find somewhere to build a nest as soon as possible, as close as possible. So if she's overwintered in your garden or in your house, there's a high chance she's going to try and build her nest in your garden or in your house. She's not necessarily going to go three blocks down the road or to the next town. She's going to find the best place she can as soon as she possibly can so that she can start up the whole process again. And then you can have another year with another 10,000 wasps flying around your garden. So, I found this out by accident years ago. I happened to leave an old um, blanket on the washing line, just a horse blanket or just, you know, just forgot it, basically. And I'm not very tidy, and it stayed there right till midwinter. And then for some reason, I just dragged it down off the, off the washing line. When I unfolded it, it was full of queen wasps. Absolutely full. I mean, I probably had about 20 or 30 who had crawled in between the, the folds to hibernate. And as I say, it was midwinter. All I had to do was spread it out on the ground and stand on them. And if you don't like the idea of doing that, if your trap works, just lay them out on the ground in midwinter. And they'll probably not even wake up. They'll just die of the cold or the robin will come and eat them. So, bit boring this bit, but you're now going to see a man hang a blanket on a shed wall. You never know, I might hit my thumb. So let's have a go. I'm just going to put it this high because there's no point putting it any higher and needing to use steps. And my blanket isn't that big, so it's probably It's a bit wobbly actually, it's probably because the trains come past it so fast. Kind of disgusting string, but it'll do the job. But the most important thing is that it's a nylon string. Yeah, this is gonna hang up this is gonna hang up here for about three or four months, so don't use string that's gonna rot away, obviously. Time on that. Time on that. Take them to there. And then cut off a bit of a length just in case I want to. Actually, a bit more now, I think. About there. Hold steady. scary knife. Big scary blunt knife. Either that was kryptonite string. There. Yeah. String.
thing out of the way. Blanket. Discussing old dog blanket, um, the skinny dog is going to be really cross because he's probably really fond of this particular blanket. Important things have a lot of folds in it, lots of little spaces. Yeah. Those little gaps. In she goes. Oh, I'm nice and warm. I'm going to sleep here. In she goes. Oh, I'm nice and warm. I'm going to sleep here. Yeah. It's actually a, that kind of fleecy sort of material. Now, obviously, I get a bit of wind here because of, well, as you know, um, the traffic. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. Right. Found that one. One more nail here. Uh, there, I think. Ready. Take it to there and tie it off. Right. I've got enough string, so I'm able to do that. There you go. Queen wasp trap. I hope it's in shot. Let me just double check. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that's in shot. So you've seen what it is. It's as simple as that. Now, don't totally freak out. Yes, she's going to lay between 1,000 and 1,500 queens in your neighbourhood. Possibly in your garden, if you haven't managed to find your nest. But loads of those won't manage to get fertilised. Oh, that's another interesting fact, is the fertile males can recognise queens from their own nest and don't mate with them. So the fertile males will go you know, next door or down the road to find a nest that they're not you know, biologically related to and mate with those queens. And those males will come and mate with your queens. So they're not even inbreeding. They are unbelievably clever. Anyway, as we were saying, just because she's laid 1,500 queens in your vicinity doesn't mean that 1,500 queens are all going to successfully mate, all going to successfully hibernate, all going to successfully get through the winter, or that they're all going to successfully manage to come out, find somewhere to make a nest, and make a nest. It's an incredibly vulnerable life for them. And the number of queen wasp nests I found, just the small, tiny, first little globe that the queen builds, abandoned, I've lost count of. You'll find them all over the place. <coughs> so you'll find a, a queen has started a nest and got to a certain... And sometimes there'll be dead larvae in there, in the, in the combs, because the queen has just not made it back that day. She's gone out foraging, getting food during that first week of work, she's incredibly vulnerable. Um, she might make a nest that then gets flooded. She might make a nest that just gets squished, found by, you know, birds or whoever, just whatever. So of that 1,500 potential queens in your neighbourhood, it's probably down to hundreds that make it. So if this works for you, there's a chance for me it's not going to because there's so many other places around here there's a high chance that this won't attract any queens but if this works for you and you get five or ten queens which you're able to kill in December 
that's five or ten queens not flying around your garden in the spring of which maybe two or three would have managed to make a nest and do the full 10,000 top of the pops in the summer. So there you go. Um, yeah, like it if you do like it. Um, don't, don't like it if you don't like it. I hope you like um, trains and subscribe because there's going to be more ramblings of this and that. And what we will do is sort of January, ideally on a really horrible frosty cold morning, we'll come and open this up and see if we caught anybody. And we'll try and film that one as well. Okay? Good. I hope you enjoyed that. It's the longest one I've done. I bet you can't hear a word. <laughs>